Before we begin, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to help the channel grow and keep up to date with our latest videos. Hi and welcome to another video by me, Flojo. Today we're going to be looking at Power Ultimate Flow Actions and we're going to be looking at the Switch Action. So what does Microsoft state the Switch Action does? Microsoft states that it identifies a single case to execute based on the evaluation of the Switch input. So what does this mean then? Well, what this means is you have a value that's passed through and a case that checks to see if it matches. If the case does match, then actions are run. However, if no cases match what the value that was passed through is, then you simply have a default case that runs a set of actions. Okay, sounds really complicated. Let's actually take a look at what it looks like then. So, this is what a switch statement looks like when you first add it to Power Automate. You have the on value. So this is where you're going to set the value that you're going to use for the switch. This is the value that's going to be initially passed through. Then you have a case. You have the equals. So this is where you're going to set a value for that particular case. So let's say we passed through a name on the switch. And then we are checking in the case if that name is Flow Joe. If that's correct and the name equals Flojo, so if the switch is Flojo and the case is Flojo, then it's going to run a set of actions. And you can add the actions with the add an action section on the bottom. So any actions within that case, if Flojo is equal to Flojo, will run. And you can add many cases and you can do so by pressing the little plus button between the case and the default case. So you'll get case one, case two, case three, case four, etc. Okay, then you have this default case. So if nothing matches what is in the switch value that you pass through, let's say I pass through Jacks and my case was Flow Joe, then obviously I haven't got a case for Jacks. What's going to happen is the default is going to run. It's going to say, okay, there is no match. I'm going to run this set of actions. So if you wanted to run actions, if something hadn't matched, you can then do so with the default case. So let's take a look at this on Power Automate then. Okay, so we are on Power Automate. I've got a flow created with a manual trigger and I've named it switch. What we're going to do firstly is we're going to add a variable. So we're going to initialize a variable and we're going to set the variable to a string we're just going to call it name and we're going to pass the value of flow Joe. Let's rename this just for clarity. So name a variable. Okay, so now we've got a trigger and then we've got a name variable being created that is a string value, uh, string type, sorry, and a value of flow Joe. What we're then going to do is we're going to click on the control section and click on switch. So now we've got our switch statement here. If we pass the name into that, we're going to pass in Flow Joe. So if any case matches to Flow Joe, it will run a set of actions. So let's write Flow Joe into here. So what we're expecting then, because we know that this variable is Flow Joe, we're going to pass Flow Joe through. The case is going to say, okay, does this case flow Joe equal to what has been passed through, which is flow Joe? Yes. Then we're going to run a set of actions. So what I'm going to do is just write a compose in here and just put true. But what happens if um, it's not flow Joe then? Well, we can add another case. So let's add another case here and let's put Jax. And then let's add another compose. And then let's just put true again. Okay, so if the switch statement it was Jax, it will go into this case. So it will firstly go into Flojo and say, is it Flojo? No, it's not, ignore. Then it will go into this one and say, is Jax equal Jax? Yes, it is. Okay, just do the compose for true. And then we have this thing called default. Now default is when no cases match what is being passed through on the switch. So 
if we click add an action here and just write compose and then we could just write true. Now the reason why I'm just doing this is to just show you that which actions are going to be run. Okay, so we've got a fairly simple layout now. We've got a switch statement that has one case for Flojo, one case for Jax, and then a default. Now we're initially passing through Flojo here in our variable. So let's save this. And then let's test our flow. Okay, so our flow has been run successfully. We've created our um, variable, which is creating a, oops, it's creating a value of Flojo. Then we've got our switch statement. So the expression result was Flojo. And if you remember our first case was saying, is it equal to Flojo? And you can see there's a tick here. And that's because this case was run. And then as you can see, this action was run because it equals Flojo. So Flojo is equal to Flojo, yes, then we run this compose action, which was just setting it to true. Okay, so then if we look at the Jax case, does Flojo equal to Jax? No, it doesn't. So then you've got the X here, so you know that this case was not run, and therefore the action within it was not run. And because there was a matching case, the default was not run. Okay, so let's now change this and run it again. But what we'll do is we'll change our variable to Jax this time. And then let's just save and test. Now what we're expecting is our first case, Flojo, to not run and the actions to not run, but the one in Jax to run. So let's open the switch statement. And as you can see here, there is an X on case one. And does Jax equal to Flojo? No, it doesn't. So that's got an X there. And in doing so, the action is not run either. But we move on to our case two. And does Jax equal to Jax? Yes, it does. So then we've got a tick here to say that our case was run. And in doing so, all of the actions were run inside. So it was just a compose and it to true. So again, the default did not run because there is a case here. Now what if we change our variable to Meg? We do not have a case for Meg. So what we're expecting is it to skip this one, to skip that one, so to skip Flojo, to skip Jax, and then go into the default. So let's do this again, let's save and test. Let's run the flow. Okay, it's run. So everything's been set, we've created our make value for our variable, and we've opened up a switch statement. Case one was not run, because does make equal to Flojo? No, it wasn't, so none of the actions were run. Case two um, was not run, you can see here, it's got the X. Uh, does make equal to Jax? No, it doesn't, and again, the actions weren't run then. And then in default, because Meg did not have its own case, we were able to run a set of actions just on that specific um, input. So let's open this and you can see that we've got the default has got a tick and if no cases contain a matching value, so Meg doesn't contain a matching case for it, then the actions are in here. So why would you use this then? Well, if you're passing through a value and you're checking to see if something um, may exist, you may have a case to say, okay, does these names exist, right? Does Flojo exist? Yes, okay, do something. We may need to update a particular item on Dataverse. Does Jax exist? Okay, we may need to update an item on Dataverse again for Jax then. Well, if Meg doesn't exist in a case, what we can do then is we could, rather than updating, we could then create a record in Dataverse specifically for Meg, i.e. add her name to the Dataverse list. And that is how you use Switch on Power Automate. Thanks for watching another video by me, Flo Joe. If you like the video, don't forget to hit that like button or select a video on your screen right now to continue learning more about the Power Platform.